It's the Ron and Fez Show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. That's the neutral milk hotel. Uh, Fezzy, that's one of the uh, milk hotels mm -hmm. that does not pick sides. Oh. The neutral milk hotel. They're not uh, with the uh, the excess, and they're not with the allies. And then uh, Dave was shouting out whole, that whole time that that was a Fred recommendation of his two years ago. <laughs> it was. <laughs> For the record. Yeah. I played that, that very song, too. Yeah. So, did we did we like it or did we act like you were an asshole? You acted like I'm an asshole. Sure, I do that. Um, <laughs> I Earl, do that. Earl said, no, this isn't for me. Yeah. And then Fez didn't have any opinion. <laughs> Again, <laughs> neutral. Fez did not understand the fact uh, what the noise was. <laughs> Fez is not a man who accepts music. He does. He re Well, actually, I will say this about Fez. He rejects all art into his life <laughs> unless it's... Uh, professional wrestling <laughs> and then he accepts it wholeheartedly all right it is the ron and fez show we started out with uh miller's crossing uh before that i'm just doing the uh the fm jack laundry list <laughs> uh, what's that guy's name from miller's crossing gabriel byrne have you seen his new uh tv show i watched the pilot episode thought it was awesome uh, he, well, you've missed two episodes since then. It's every night, like a soap opera. Holy shit. Every single night at 1030, and it's basically uh, just two people talking to each other in therapy. Um, and it's actually not a bad show at all. I, I have to fully get into it, but I think by next Friday, there'll already have been like 10 shows. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it is. It's just different. I love the fact that they're doing stuff different. Off of regular TV. Now, regular TV, since the uh, the writer strike, their their viewing is down twenty one percent. And you're all happy with that? Dave? Yes, I am. I'm grinning ear to ear. Uh, and then the bad side is the people that left. They don't know if they're ever going back. And I, you know, I fully fucking comprehend that. You know, once you yeah. give up on. Uh, you know, regular episode TV. What's on? You know, Tuesday nights at nine thirty. You just you're just gone. You find other things to do. It's easy to get out of sync with that schedule. And you know, they there's been so much bad TV anymore. Anyway, there's nothing to draw you back. What do you mean anymore? When you were a little kid, there was bad TV, <laughs> and the same percentage now. It's always been uh, fairly bad. You always have two or three sh you know shows to watch, and then when you stop watching them. That's it. It's like when we were all enjoying Journeyman. Journeyman's over. So what? Your life goes on. You don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. That's what these fuckers don't realize. Well, think of how many people, you know, the World Series rings seem to decline every year since the strike. And it's, it's when, when, when you give people nothing to watch, they will find something else. They'll just move along. They don't care. What the hell? Why should we? Why should we care? Why are you sitting there? Fucking chain to your TV set like it matters. <laughs> How about this? You go outside. Just go outside. <laughs> What's out there, though? Life. <laughs> Life is out there. Imagine, Fezzy, that if you are watching the Discovery Channel and uh, those little fish that just hide under rocks and then every once in a while they come out for food. Right, yeah. You feel sorry for those fish? Oh, yeah. That's us if we don't fucking pay oh. attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're staying in the house all the time is like being the little fucking fish under a rock. It's just missing out on an entire ocean. 75% yeah. of the world is ocean. That little fish is under a rock. Uh, the difference is that fish can get eaten. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, Fezzy, nobody's going to eat you. Get <laughs> it, out a little bit. And if you go out, you, there's always like adventures that pop up. I had an adventure that popped up to me recently. I, I felt great. Felt like was it your own penis? No, it wasn't. Boy, this seems like a setup for a story. I'm not going to take. <laughs> uh, no name here. You're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, it's Chris from DC. Hey, buddy. Uh, the the in treatment. If you have some sort of cable on demand or digital cable network, uh, you have access to the entire week's worth of shows. My girlfriend and I watched all five of them last night, so we watched tonight and Fridays. What a great show. And, and just to see the progression as the week goes through, what the therapist goes through, and then at the end, how he just unleashes all of his... Um, Why would you want to give this up to me? Why, we're sitting along <laughs> enjoying it in regular time. Why do you feel the need to come in here to say that the guy unleashes at the end of the week? I feel special. Uh, yeah, uh, we all have in demand. We're not watching it that way. Who wants to sit down and watch all my TV for one fucking week? Mind if me and my chick sit down at night, watch this show? 
You know what, who did that? Like MTV or maybe even Bravo. Remember, they started that marathon. You know, they'll play a weekend of real world marathons. Yeah. Or Bravo would play a weekend of Project Runway. Well, right. with, with the on demand now, you could go home at night and watch most shows that afternoon. They yeah. don't even wait until after the thing now to put it on. Because uh, the cable networks, obviously, they don't give a shit. You're paying for it, you're paying for it. Have mm. it when you want it. I always find some of the like other on-demand channels kind of funny, like the A&E on-demand. They have a bunch of King of Cars episodes. <laughs> 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 Who's going back to watch the King of Cars? Missed right. one. You know, um, we, uh, we, we all love Journeyman, and we missed that. I think we may have a new Journeyman coming up. I think the name of the show is New Amsterdam. I saw the commercial. And this is about a New York cop who has always been a New York cop. He's an immortal. So he has been here since it was New Amsterdam. And he's always been a cop. I saw that, too. It looked cool. It's very nobody, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, nobody knows just... about it. Nobody, you know, he's kind of like, uh, I guess he changes his identity every, you know, 30, 40 years or whatever he needs to do. Can we speculate? Because I have a theory on him. Yeah, give me the speculation. He's a vampire detective. Mm, wow, that's a hell of a the theory. <laughs> if, it, if that's true, it's the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> Why is he walking around in the middle of the afternoon? That's Good not going to happen. CBS just did a vampire detective show. Why are you angry? <laughs> We're not Z-Man. I'm not going to take your shit. Sorry. I'm not Z-Man. You can't unleash your posse on me. <laughs> Still wound up, I guess. Yeah. Calm it down, big man. Take it easy, Francis. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, that thing yesterday that you did, mm -hmm. yeah, you were pretty insane. I'll just leave it at that. We'll move on. I thought I was well within my rights. Can I tell you something? You destroyed a man's life. <laughs> and I wish I was kidding you. He, uh, you shut his blog down yesterday, and you got the cigar company uh, upset with him. And you and those hideous uh, Watley Posse people. Yeah. You ought to feel ashamed of yourself right now. Fez will be on Friday's episode of In Treatment. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I started watching Breaking Bad after the guy was on the show, and uh, it's awesome. I can't get enough of it. Yeah, it's a good uh, show. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. What's that guy's name that was on our show? Brian Cranston. Yeah, I like him a lot. I like him, and I like his little show. I got tuned in. I like everything that guy's ever done. Like, it's sensational. Yeah, I mean, the, the Watley and the Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, he's great. He's just got a good face. Some people do, some people don't. That's the only fucking reason he's a decent actor. <laughs> no. Because he was born with a, uh, a decent uh, face. Well, look who it is. I was actually thinking of this guy this morning because we haven't talked to him in a while. It's our good buddy Mikey Background. Hello, Michael. Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to pledge my allegiance to the fe to the uh, Watley Posse. Sure. You're Thanks. Mean. You're mean as well. Why wouldn't you be part of that? Sure. Um, I want to tell you guys, I worked on New Amsterdam uh, a few months ago. I played a bartender in the 1700s, and... Uh, it looks like a pretty cool, pretty cool show. Kind of a little X Files ish, if if you know what I mean. But it, not really. I, I I don't know if I can give away why the guy is what he is. But who's to stop you? He's what? Who's to stop you? You want to just say it? Uh, what happened was at some point he saved a Native American princess and was granted immortality, so he cannot die until he finds his true love. <sighs> I knew it wasn't a vampire. All right, thanks. See, Ronnie, I cracked under the pressure. You really put the screws in. Yeah, I really don't even understand. I wanted, I wanted to find out about the engine bride. <laughs> I wish I knew all about that. <laughs> Spoiler day? <laughs> That's the last thing you want to do is fall in love then, right? You're like, oh, yeah. get out of here. Yeah. I've met a great girl. I'm never going to see her again. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would want to live forever. I, f I would find it disgusting. Not me. Yeah. You, you could see what 3000 AD looks like. Who wants to? Yeah, that's what you want to watch. Uh, what, everyone you've ever known die. That's got to be fantastic. <laughs> you know how you get that feeling just as the plane is taking off? Do you ever do this in your head? Crash, 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 crash. Never. I do just the opposite. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Well, it's the same message the universe <laughs> is getting. If you have paid attention to the secret, Fez, that's <laughs> the same message. Right. Picking up crash. Uh, all right, Mikey, how's everything in your life? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Funny you should mention an airplane, because Christine is, is going to visit her parents tomorrow. So, Fezzi, I want you to think about her on the plane. Ronnie, don't even give it a second thought. 
Crash, 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 <laughs> crash. <laughs> where, where do our parents live? Uh, Florida. Are they awful people? Oh, they're lovely. Mm, okay, then I'm shocked. All right, <laughs> talk to you later, Mikey. Peace. Bye. My, Mikey back, my greatest guy in the world, married to an incredibly cruel woman. Right. Isn't that the oddest thing? He's nice. She's incredibly <laughs> right. cool. Yeah. Maybe it's opposites attract. Maybe it's that theory. It could be, Fezzy. It very well <laughs> could be. All right, uh, Ron and Fez show. By the way, they locked Brittany up last night. Uh, she got the three-day uh, 5150, and this could turn into uh, two weeks. The uh, parents are fighting with her uh, manager over who's in uh, charge of her and, you know, what's going to happen to her. But uh, last night, I saw the videos that you were talking about before, Fezzi, where she's talking British. Uh-huh. She's a sick girl. There's yeah. something fucking legitimately wrong with this girl. So maybe it'll work out for her. But uh, she has to get off the fucking streets. She's fucking whacked. And those paparazzi, evil. Evil people. It's like watching a gang rape of a crazy girl. They're brainwashing her now. Uh, I, You know, one of them sleeping with her. It's mm -hmm. just fucking sick. And the guy who's sleeping with her is totally bad news. He has... Well, who would sleep with a crazy woman? This guy. Uh, oh. Earl. That. Him. Guilty as charged. Seriously, you sh fucking should be charged. You absolutely should be charged, Earl. Uh, by the way, I got a uh, note from Dr. Steve yesterday. Hey, I had a surprise secret guest all lined up on my show, uh, and then it was given out on your show yesterday, uh, Black Girl. So that was supposed to be, he, he was selling this as I've got a big secret guest coming in, and it was Earl to talk about his problems. And Earl, the worst person at radio, just throws it out. I'll be on uh, Dr. Steve's show. Well, I didn't throw it out. Fez said you're going to be. Hey, you're going to be on Doctor Steve's show. I didn't want. Why to... would you say this, Fez? I thought Earl threw it out. Because Earl was throwing it out in the office. He was telling people he was going to be on Doctor Steve's show, and at no point did he tell me mystery guest. Oh, well, I didn't know. I thought that. So that's why Steve said what he did about you. What do you say about me? Nothing. Cuckoo. But seriously, the guy's got a show planned. You two guys, come on. Look at each other and say, we are going to start and produce. We are going to start, start producing. producing. You, my friend, lately have been loose lips, I noticed. Loose I know. Loose lips Mahoney. You and can't wait to get the info out. <laughs> uh, Ryan, you're on Runa Fez. Hello? Yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, how are you going to complain about spoilers when you ruin There Will Be Blood for everyone? Oh, stop. By the way, I get uh, literally a couple emails every day of people saying they saw the movie, and when that scene starts, they know how it's going to end because of you. They, so guess what? What? You've joined the Loose Lips Mahoney no, crew. The only people uh, not part of that crew right now are me and Pitsy. No. Me and Pip Pitsy are not part of the... Fucking power trio of loose I'm, lips Mahoney. I'm tight lips Lawrence because I said that a guy That's the gets opposite? hurt. Yes, I said a guy gets hurt. No, you didn't. But with you brought up what it was. And you didn't say hurt. But it could have been several characters. Now, one. You were There's very only really two characters in the whole fucking film. And one of them gets what you said happened to him. Yeah, you were very specific of how the scene goes down. Movie been out for three weeks. Not across the country. Uh, the injury uh, report came out, and uh, nothing's wrong with Tom Brady. <laughs> all those things, all that speculation, it doesn't even show up on the injury report. All right, I thought Earl was the secret teller. Uh, it's really Fez and Dave. So, well, I didn't say anything. Uh, we've got a power trio of people telling secrets. I want to <laughs> play a little Tom Brady uh, audio for you. This is you remember when the the woman asked Tom Brady to uh, marry him? Yeah. Uh, listen to this audio, but think of Master Poe. I honestly think that Brady and Master Poe <laughs> talk to women the same exact way. So the woman in the wedding dress. I'm in love with you. Are you really? Will you marry me, please? Wow. Marry I've me, I've never please. had a proposal. <laughs> What's your name first? Inez. 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 It's a beautiful name, Inez. Marry me. What's... I'm the real Miss Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few Miss Bradys in my life. Mom, I see one of them. 
You could be? Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a one-woman man. Oh. But you're beautiful, and anybody who, who would have the opportunity to Can marry you would be a lucky shirt? man. Doesn't he sound just <laughs> like Poe? He does. It's weird. And he even sweet talks like Poe. And laughs. But, yeah, everything yeah. is done. That's, that's the exact same way he talks to uh, uh, Poe talks to women. Uh, Ronnie, you're on Fez. Yeah, guys. Hey, just wanted to let you guys know that uh, Brady uh, Belichick caught a bunch of shit a couple years back for disclosing injuries, and uh, that's why he puts every little injury on the uh, injury report no matter what happens. I'm going to start running an injury report here on the Ron and Fez show, but it's only going to be for mental injuries. And it's when are you going to see the people on the show <laughs> seem like they're acting crazy. I'm just going to put it out there and say <laughs> this is where we are right now. <laughs> I'm back into my insomnia kick. I don't oh. know what happens. I don't have anything on my mind. Nothing has changed. And I can't get to sleep before fucking daylight. There's well, no fucking reason for it. Again, seasons. It was a little bit warmer yesterday. That always screws with uh, someone's chemistry. It doesn't. I, I, it doesn't feel like my chemistry is fucking screwed with. It just. I go home. I feel tired. I just can't sleep. And then I have a night like last night where I. I guess Kathleen from the Bronx is fucking sleeping. So I'm sitting there four thirty in the morning without anybody sending me funny YouTube videos. <laughs> That's a rare occasion for her to go to sleep. Uh, she and I have this thing where we try to find the worst possible cover songs. <laughs> Ever <laughs> on YouTube and send them back and forth to each other. And I'm always like, this stuff is great. I'm going to put it on the air. And then the next day, I'm like, well, that's the stupid. I just was laughing at fucking nothing. On that. <laughs> you know what? Poor people who don't know how to fucking properly sing. Um, here's uh, David. David, you're on Fez. Now, we can be on here Sunday uh, during the game, but we can't talk about the game, right? We cannot talk about the game. That's absolutely correct. What, what can we talk about? We can talk about the commercials that are playing. All right, do, do we want to do Commercial Fest 2008? <laughs> well, we will just sit here and quietly judge the commercials, and uh, that'll be our, the way our Sunday. And then we'll turn off the game when there's no commercials on. <laughs> and just do it the complete opposite way. Yeah, I would say commercial fest. Wait a second, no! I mean, I, I, I like the fact that we we're would be We're going to get together. updates from listeners. <laughs> I like that we're going to be together on Super Bowl Sunday. I, I love that. But we have to, I have to watch the fucking game. Well, you can... The biggest game of my life. Guess what? You can be at your house where you have your Super Bowl party planned. <laughs> no, no, no. And Fez and I might plan Commercial Fest 2008. <laughs> I, I, no, I want to hang out with you guys. Plus, you guys got me good luck. You know what I'm fucking uh, totally annoyed with? Budweiser. Every year, they act like they're not going in. And I know they are. The Budweiser... I say look out for Budweiser once again this year. D and also, Coke. Keep an eye, uh, keep really? an eye on that Coca-Cola. Okay. Mac and PC is my prediction. Oh, enough of the Mac and PC. God, I'm, I'm so sick of Mac. Where does fucking Mac get off? Fucking tr treating PC like he's a piece of shit. PC. Who's got the biggest fucking part of the market? PC. PC. Yeah. Why do they act like he's the asshole? You fucking s smarmy little prick. I've been saying this since day one. PC reminds me of Mikey Boy. And Mac is like a you know a, a, a ten bat a, a, a Maddie Fridays. Get out of it! You're out of your mind, and you're so inside, Dave. Well, you're I know. so whack in, inside. Uh, here's uh, Brooklyn Ace. Say hey, Ace. What's up, boys? Dave, yeah. are you out of your blessed mind? Do you want mm -hmm. to say twenty years of labor peace is a weak union? Yeah, it's a weak fucking union. That is the NFL has got. They have fucking. Um, uh, there's labor peace because they're not taking care of their retired fucking guys. Exactly. They're an embarrassment as a union. Be G Gene Upshaw, I will call him. I hope he's the anti-Obama. I were, I swear, I swear to God. Every time I look at fucking Obama, I think, is this the next Gene Upshaw? Everybody was so excited to get the black guy into that thing, and what? The, what is he? He's a fucking white guy underneath a black mask. Yeah, and the fact that. There hasn't been a strike means that it's weak. No. The fact that they haven't even threatened the NFL means that it's weak. Well, the fact that they've got guys fucking uh, drinking out of uh, out of puddles 
when they're 50 years old means there's something weak happening there. And it's not even um, older guys. There was a thing on, on this uh, week's episode of HBO Real Sports. A guy who played this decade and was out of the league for four years, his wife has to dress him and has to wipe his ass. I can't watch those shows. I saw, I wipe saw, his ass! I know. I saw that thing. Uh, I can't watch it. It's too fucking depressing. And this guy's young, man. Yeah. He's 35, 34 years old. Yeah, that's a strong fucking union they have. Thanks a lot, Earl. I mean, you've been blaming me for it. Like, Obama, he says, yes, we can. Gene Upshaw is, no, he ain't. That's Gene Upshaw. Everything's just fucking phrases with you now, isn't it? Blab <laughs> what is Posters. it, blabber mouth? Weren't you supposed to save that for Dr. Steve's show? Well, I didn't want to I tell you about saying stuff in front of Fez? <laughs> Don't. He's, he's been warned about that? I've warned everybody. You fucking spouted off two different things this week. I know. It's supposed to be out there. In less than 24 hours, actually. How you feeling today? You must run down the tunnel? Yeah. <laughs> you know what you need? What? Storyline. Why well, You had a great show yesterday, right? Right, yeah. Where's your storyline today? Yeah, I d yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Well, my storyline is still waiting to hear from Tommy Z if he's accept accepting the hair versus hair bet. Hasn't he been through enough? He and his family. All he Tommy had to Z do uh, uh, took the things that people said, right. you know, the internet stuff, the heart. And I'm like, Tommy, no one's going to hurt you or your family. Why would they? It's a hair versus hair bet. <laughs> I go, there's not even, there's no one that sick that would go looking for you for not joining a hair versus hair bet. <laughs> and how is a haircut a bet anyway? And didn't we already have a thing? No more bets. No more hair versus hair bets. Well, yeah, we did, but this seemed like it was a special occasion. It was the Super Bowl, and you know, Tommy Z spouting off. Who do you want in the Super Bowl? New England, and that makes you. And you're giving away how many points against Tommy Z? None. This is just a pride bet. And uh, you have pride uh, picking a team that's twelve and a half point favorites. <laughs> this is your modern day Nostradamus. <laughs> and look around here. You're surrounded by guys who grew up with the Giants. What if uh, when uh, your team? The Buccaneers played if everybody was cheering for the Raiders. We all cheered for the Buccaneers for you. Well, that's true, but That's because we didn't have Stover then. <laughs> well, by the way, while you were strong yesterday, Stover, the intern, walked in here, decks you, and then leaves, and you take it. Oh, I didn't think I took it. You took it, Nancy. <laughs> you did. <laughs> My name is Fez. <laughs> Nancy Sinatra, <laughs> these boots are made for walking. But you know what? Ron brings up a good point because I bought Tampa Bay Bucks stuff. Um, West Side, who I was going out with at the time, had a Tampa Bay Bucks shirt, and we were like, we were so into it. And you got you got to back your buddies up and, when and, it's their team. And then we had a party, a Ron Fez party. You guys had a party, I should say, um, at the Hard Rock, and everyone was hugging and yeah. be, not because to see you guys a, but to also to be happy for Fez winning the Super. Bowl. It, You're it really, right. It really hurts, to be honest with you. You know, I'm hurt by it. I, I can't speak for Pitts. He's stupid. <laughs> That's true. Because he just sat <laughs> He's there. He's unemotional. Just He's just unemotional. Yeah. And dumb. You got to back these guys up, Fizzy. Well, I'm not going to take the Giants in a bet. I don't think they're going to win. But you took them last week against Green Bay, and we Because won. I thought they were going to win. I broke my jinx. Why would I why would I go backwards emotionally? Yes. Great. I hope you win a Super Bowl. Good for you. I'm glad your team's in it. All right. She's walked away, That's Davey. Mean. You, you gotta get your uh your wife one of those pregnancy shirts, one of those big puffy shirts. Well, that belly's starting to really stick out. Oh yeah, I like it. I like to rub it for good luck, you know? Yeah, I know, but you gotta get her one of those big shirts that have a bow on the front. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That seems to me like the worst designs of all time are pregnancy outfits. Oh, yeah. Why the giant bow? Is that supposed to take your eye off the belly? I suppose. I don't know. My mom bought her these huge blouses that That's even before she got pregnant. <laughs> no. She did that before. <laughs> Just awful looking. I hope she, Beanie's not listening, but not 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 a good look. That's one of the uh, uh, better things said about her. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, come on, Fez. You know, and, and I don't think you are really thinking that the Patriots win. I just think, I I don't know. It doesn't feel like you're choosing from the heart. It doesn't. 
I'm choosing with my mind. I said that. And when Tommy Z, the Z-Man, came in here and started bragging about the Giants, all we said is, let's bet. Hair versus hair. But why wouldn't you just let him be and have his own fun time? Why get involved? I wanted to see exactly how much uh, Giants pride he had. Why? Who are you, the tester? You're the lab tester? <laughs> you go along and you fucking test people <laughs> to see what they have? They have what they have. These guys grew up with this team. This is a personal thing to them. It's not like a football thing. This is like uh, everything that you've ever wanted in your life has the possibility of happening for this franchise. I mean, it, there's no such thing for Santa Claus for adults. This is that magical kind of feeling. This is Santa Claus for adults, and it's basically like you're shitting on Santa Claus's ass. Because Why on his ass? Or in his mouth. I mean, whatever. It basically means you're doing something bad to Santa Claus because... You know Santa Claus isn't real, right? No, I know that. That's what I'm saying. That So you're shitting so, in an imaginary person's mouth. That should do no harm. The metaphor, metaphorically, is what you're doing. But it, it's, he's shitting in a, in a metaphor. Basically, he is destroying the magic. Is what I'm right, trying I to say. say. So oh. this is a magical time, right? And then he's taking his his, his thing on that's, as tester, right? That's where it is. That's where the shit is. It's on the magic. And it, no, I mean, I mean seriously, it, it hurts. Hey, speaking of which, uh, Fez has something come in from Buffalo. Did he get it yet? Um, not that I know. I'm not Keep yet. an eye on the, uh, on the door for that. I can't trust these guys. But somebody's sending you a present, Fez, and I want to make sure you get it. Oh, that's nice. Love to get a gift. Yeah, make sure the rest of us are out of the room, too, when you open it up. Could be dangerous. No, not, not if we're out of the room. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be fine. Maybe an intern will have to open this thing up. But, you know, people now don't trust sending presents here. Because Earl. Why me? Why did I get... Why because I get you're an awful person. I'm not an awful person. Did you, did you turn around and ruin uh, Dr. Steve's show? Well, that was only after Fez let it out. Oh. And... Asshole. <laughs> if something is supposed to be a surprise, why are you running around the office telling it to people? Why couldn't you keep your big mouth shut and keep it to yourself? I just thought it was your right to know. Oh, I really did. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, being, I'm not being ball Whoa. busting. Oh, I'm, you're not. I'm just, I'm just you like, don't think you are. I just thought it was like I thought it was just thought it was a nice thing to let you guys know. I really did. Why didn't you let me know the surprise part of it? <laughs> well, I, I, that part I failed. To because tell you're you. an idiot. That's why. <laughs> because you're an absolute fucking idiot. Still on this high from yesterday, Fez? Still a little angry, yes. <laughs> Boy, that therapist is working wonders. Oh, yeah, did you see the shrink yesterday? Yeah. What you guys work on? Just you, not turning your <laughs> posse, <laughs> losing some people and threatening them and <laughs> destroying their job. He's I didn't me mention my posse yesterday. He's memorizing other people's stories from In Treatment with Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> Just repeating them. Uh, Fez, I've seen In Treatment, so I know where you're going. Oh, with sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you work on yesterday? Just the the panic that mm. be, I've been having. You're panicky today? Yeah, I've been. You had a great show yesterday. I know, and that's and I'm like, why do I panic? And we got into this thing. I shouldn't talk about myself, but we got into this thing. He shouldn't talk about himself. What else you got? <laughs> but it just feels like like the panic comes from a sense of doom. Like, there's going to be trouble. You, right. know, you know how, like, when I hate to go out in the city if yeah. the sun starts to go down? It just feels like a sense of trouble. I, I, I will explain to people. Fez lives his life like I am legend. He likes to be back as soon as it's dark, <laughs> and then he takes bleach and puts it all around his door <laughs> so none of the zombies can smell. So, um... Uh... You have a sense of doom all the time? Yeah. And or just nighttime? N uh, mostly all the time. But, like, everything, it feels like everything is going to lead to trouble. Right. Like, the other day when I went to go do that fun thing, you know, with Laszlo. Yeah. And There's another thing he's given out. He wasn't supposed to. I can say Laszlo. Yeah, but you also gave out the project. Oh. But, the, um, you know, on the train, the whole time it just felt like trouble's going to come from this. 
you know, like I'm going to be late for work or I'm going to, you know, so, or that, you know, something else is going to go wrong. But why would that matter if you're late for work? See, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. And that's what me and the, uh, the shrink, the therapist were going, trying, we're working on yesterday. Does she realize she's done absolutely no good for you? She thinks she has. She thinks I'm doing better. You're, uh, she's fucking like a, that's like a, uh, a salesman's going, I'm glad you got all these extra things for your car. I really think you're going to be happy with it. She really does feel like you're better? Yeah. Yeah, she feels like I'm better. Like I'm having more good days than bad. Like I felt really good going in there yesterday. Right. After yesterday's show. And she's like, I'm seeing more good days than I used to see. Even though they're still quite rare. Which is what Tony Soprano said every other week to Dr. Melfi. And then look what happened to him. Well, he got some onion rings. Yeah, he had so dinner fun. with his family at a diner. And life went on. Mm -mm. All right, so you don't know what the feeling of doom is. Yeah, well, the, she said the trouble, the fact that I have to ruin everything that's good, anything that's fun, is because I don't feel like I deserve to have a good time or have any fun. That I agree with you. You really don't deserve it. <laughs> that doesn't help. Because you're a bad girl? Yes. I am going to write down what I think and see if this makes you feel better. And this is the only reason why you're having problems. All right. That note says you are retarded. <laughs> so it's not your fault. <laughs> feel free from it. <laughs> Remember that time uh, Earl blamed you for the reason that uh, Dr. Steve's secret cut out? Yeah, it was today. It was just a few minutes ago. How did that make you feel? <laughs> Pissed. Remember when you called him asshole? <laughs> yeah, and a <laughs> fucking idiot, too. That was great. Watch the language. I mean, I know we're on satellite, but please. So it all comes down to that. So as soon as you feel like you deserve good times, you'll be okay. Right. And she goes, that could take a while. Why? Oh, she she needs to fucking buy some property upstate. <laughs> so the, and that's you know basically where we left it yesterday. But you know, it's I a, think you need a new therapist. But I mean, at least to me, I got to this trouble thing that I did. I didn't understand. I don't know why I panic all the time. You know, twenty four hours a day. Mm hmm. And what did you come up with? The the whole trouble theory. That everything feels like it's going to lead to trouble or doom. Right. You didn't know that you felt that way. No, I just, I didn't know why I was just always scared. Right. Well, nothing's going to happen to you here. <laughs> By the way, are you happy now? You feel good about yourself? I never feel good when Fez cries. Hey, but... uh, hey, Dave. Get Earl the big uh, thanks you made uh, Fez Cry trophy. He gets to carry that around with him for the rest of the day. Will do. Asshole and a fucking idiot. You know what? You, you know how you feel like there's a black cloud hanging over your head? Uh-huh. My theory is you have a black man hanging over your head, and it's Earl. You're walking and around. And that's 24 hours a day. You're walking around with a black man hanging over your head. And so gonna... yesterday you had a fun day, you had a great day, you hurt another human being. Today, you haven't, you haven't unleashed on anyone and you feel bad. Uh, I, I, here's what I don't understand about therapy. You left here yesterday feeling great, right? Right. And I swear to God, I got home last night and everybody wrote to me, oh, loved having Fez yesterday. There's the Fez we love. That was great. I come in here today. He's a wreck before the show starts. Was starting, and you heard even he was at a pitch yeah. at the beginning of the show, and I feel like she should have said, "You had a good thing. Let's work on celebrating that." Why take you right back into this trouble theory that now you've locked into? Which, you know, guess what? We all have bad days ahead of us. Right. That's the fucking problem with being a human being. You're going to get those fucking phone calls. Bad things are going to happen. Why bring it up? Does she ever... Uh, let, let me just say this. Uh, and we're talking about not being able to string uh, days together. Uh, Lily, the, you, could, you could keep the nice look going. 
You don't have to do that to me. A little effort. Does no. the therapist ever point out like good things in Never. Fez's life? No, that's what I'm saying. Why not celebrate the big win that he had yesterday? Well, did he? Fez he destroyed a man's life and closed down his fucking website. <laughs> he should be all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not celebrate? Fez is the big winner. Why? Last night should have been a night of happiness with her. Why does she got to bring up this trouble theory? Yeah, and then that's what I do. I have a good day, and then ruin it. What about what does this make you feel better when I hang, uh, hold this up? That's a note that says you are retarded, and that doesn't make you feel better. No, it doesn't help me. What if I draw this special needs kid underneath of it, and then no. I'll just put... why the big teeth? <laughs> Looks like you a... know how your teeth are kind of large. Well, just the front two. All right, so today you're upset. Woo! Yeah. Get back to that guy. Woo! <laughs> right, yeah. They're gonna fucking, you know, they're gonna Britney your ass. Sooner or later, they're gonna 5150. I know, and that Britney thing was pre planned. You know, it wasn't like, oh, let's call 911 and get her. Yeah. It was like planned. It was supposed to happen like 24 hours earlier and couldn't be worked out. So, I mean, they already had the police tipped off and the paramedics and a stretcher waiting. So what's your point of that? Oh, that, you know, the plotting that could go on. Yeah, but that is a good thing for that girl. Oh, totally, yeah. And a good thing for you. I don't know if it's a good thing for me. Do you see that she's, is this, she's happier and safer now? She's de- Yeah, she, I don't know if she's happier. She's definitely safer. Don't you want to be safer and happier? I always want to feel safer, yeah. You got it. So just think of yourself warm. I like, can't even move. This is a little straight jacket. <laughs> Snuggly. Straight jacket would be the worst. Not being able to move your arms. But we'll have you so sedated it won't matter. Oh, that would be awful. Or the things where they uh, strap you to the bed. Yeah. Where, like, all I can imagine is having an itch and not being able to move my arms to scratch it. You know what set you off yesterday was a certain word that was used in that blog. We won't say what it was. But that... Right. Maybe I'm crazy here. Sometimes I think you... Uh, like I tell you to have a storyline, you feel better when you have a mission. You don't like regular life. You like over-the-top things. Now, you act like you like safety, but you're at your happiest when you're in a fucking G-string, dancing on a pole. You know what I mean? Maybe you got to keep that mind of yours occupied all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an absolute great point. Yeah. And, but- uh, and another thing that could really help you get through a lot of stuff is uh, drugs and alcohol. You would be surprised how much drugs, especially mixing the two. You mix some drugs and alcohol, you don't have time to worry about doom. Well, you're not supposed to mix those two. Well, that could be lead to a bad combination. Especially if you fall asleep. <sighs> you find things wrong with everything, Fez. Every theory you got a problem with. I mean, that's what I do. Sleep. I ruin things. Booze is great. I mean, you, I know you, you like to drink. We should just start drinking a lot more together, maybe. Or something. All right, your theory is for me to buy you drinks. Yeah, I, just, I, mean, I, meant, I meant together, but... What's happening with Coco? Is that still going along? Yeah, Coco and I are getting along very well. Did you bring that up to the therapist? Um, I think I, I brought Coco up last week. Here's uh, Dan. You're on Run Fez. Hey, this uh, teenage therapist is just trying to keep the money rolling in, trying to screw Fez up. You should drop her, Fez. I, I, I'm not fucking happy with as happy as you were yesterday. And then the pitch you're at when I arrived here this morning. And I'll tell you something else. I'm glad you stood, stood up to that fucking Earl. Well, that drives me nuts. That And you know what? Never even said yesterday why I am opening up my big mouth. You know, that's supposed to be a surprise. Just let me keep going on about it. At that point, it was too late. I, it was nothing I could do, really. So, you know, so I confirmed it. It was out there, so I confirmed it. Oh, <laughs> the nerve of this guy. I can't believe you're still getting in my face about this. 
I, I'm not trying to get in your your kitchen about. I'm just, oh. I'm just. You're not in my kitchen. Trust me, there. You know, the last thing I want to do is piss you off. But then, why is it the first thing you always do? He feels like he's in your kitchen, like he's rattling around. Yeah. There. Trust me, you're not. You're nowhere near my kitchen. You're not even near my building or my apartment. What's that mean? Where is he taking Just this rooms? metaphor? <laughs> that he's not even close to getting in my mind. Yeah. Just property. <laughs> Just naming property. You want to go off on the Santa Claus theory again? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to. I'm, I'm You're angry today, so Fez. Yeah, I'm still angry. I'm angry at myself, but I'm taking it out on everybody else. Now, why would you be angry at yourself? You have a posse. For real. It took you two years to accept your posse. Maybe even more. Yeah. You know, all these years, I'm not part of that, I'm not part of that. Yesterday, you used it to destroy man's life. To destroy man's livelihood. You have more power than you even know. You have a posse. And the posse's great. And, in fact, there's new uh, Watley Posse t-shirts that we're going to be able to give away. Here's uh, Lisa. You're on Run Fez. Yeah, hey, guys, uh, do we need to turn the uh, Watley Posse on the Earl? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Lisa, I'll tell you what. We are going to make you the first recipient of the uh, Wasi the Watley Posse uh, T-shirt. Yeah! Yeah. And on the back of it said, Earl's in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it what does is, not say that. He's not in your kitchen? No, he's nowhere near my kitchen. <laughs> he's in the den. No. He's not even in my lobby. So we got the Watley Posse t-shirts. Hold on, we'll get your information. Thanks to Photoshop Mike and his website, RonandFezStore.com. RonandFezStore.com, where you can pick up the Watley Posse t-shirt, as well as other t-shirts that he's just selling about us. <laughs> right. M many of them with little cartoons. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it is our heads <laughs> on top of other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And stickers and everything else. There's stickers in there? Oh, yeah. He's got all kinds of paraphernalia. I think there's keychains as well. Why? <laughs> Who would want a keychain? Well, the Watley Posse. All celebrating I, the Posse. I did not, not even know the Watley Posse was real to yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then it went off. Yeah. To the point of where I, I got a little nervous where, you know what? Maybe this has gone out of my control here. Well, I, I told you that like, it legitimately screwed up Z-Man's life. And this is the funny thing about Fez, because you hear how sensitive he is. So I call him last night. I go, I just got a call at like 7 o'clock from Z-Man, who was basically totally freaked. His website got shut down. Uh, JR Cigar is not happy with him because they're, they're regular people. They run a legitimate business. And some of the Watley Posse people left words on there that, you know, corporate people don't like to see. Mm -hmm. So they shut it down. They just shut it down. And they got slammed. There yeah. were so many people. So I call up Fez. I go, you know, Z-Man's Fez didn't have a feeling in the world. Hey, whatever, you know. <laughs> He's the, he should have just taken a bet. And I'm like, how come you were so sensitive? And yet when you see a uh, another person hurting, never uh, bothers you. <laughs> Here's uh, Will. Will, you're on running Fez. Hey, you're running Fez. Hey, Fez, uh, if you had just come to grips that you're actually turning into a comic book evil villain, things might work out a little better for you, bro. What do you think he is? Is this like a guy who has problems, but then he d decides I, I to turn it like, against the earth? Yeah, he's like an evil villain who's just now recognizing he's an evil villain. He's been an evil prick for years. You wow. Know? Yeah. I love you, Fez. Thanks, I, I guess. I love you. You're in his kitchen. <laughs> Jeez, he's not in my kitchen. <laughs> what? He's nowhere near my kitchen. Sounds like the kitchen. He's not even outside my front door. I thought I heard pots and pans slamming yeah, together. No. In the silverware. You didn't hear the stove go on, anything. No, Brian K. Vaughn, he's got his uh, thing. I saw a lot of people. He's a good buddy of ours, a listener of the show, also writes for Lost. And he's got a great comic book series. Is it Why, Fez? Yeah, Why, The Last Man. And I think that's finally coming to an end. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he's wrapping it up. talking about that turning into a, a, a movie. That's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You ever have an idea for like a good comic book character? Well, I was thinking of one uh, when I was a kid about a shapeshifter, but he could only uh, acquire a, sh uh, a look like another person once, and once he did that, he couldn't do it again. So it would be a different person. It would be like a different character each uh, month in the comic book. So whoever he was... Uh, 
as soon as he shifts shapes, yeah, who, he wouldn't be able to go back again. Yeah, whoever he changes into, he couldn't do that again. And why would he he change into other people? Like if he needed to change into someone, like to save the day, like if he had to change into the president, you know, <laughs> to save the country or something, or to save the president's life. What? Okay, that might happen once. <laughs> How often would you need to turn into another person? Oh, there would be all kinds of, you know, it would almost be like, you know, where you're taking someone's place in their life, you know, and helping them with a problem. Where do they go while you're dressed, while you look like them? Oh, you got to, like, distract them. It's not real thought through, <laughs> but it was just all You ever have an idea for one, Dave? Uh, yeah, I have an idea uh, of a guy named Techno, and he lives within all technology. So what he does is he could live within televisions, tele telephones, uh -huh. movie screens, and everything like that. Not only could he influence the media, but because technology um, encapsulates electricity, then he could shoot like electric beams from those things. You know, he could shock people. So he would, uh, he's also a shapeshifter, but one no. minute he looks like a telephone, and next no, time no. he looks like a DVD. No, he he's not. He's not actually shifting into shape. His like his electrodes and his spirit is moving into the the, the TV. That's the stupidest thing ever. Earl, what is yours? I always wanted a black superhero that on par like with a like has the brains of Batman, has the strength of Superman, and you know he lives in New York. Well, you think Superman's an idiot? I'm not thinking he's an idiot. <laughs> he's no. super intelligence. <laughs> yeah, super intelligence, but. I mean, but I always thought Batman was like a lot more crafty and a lot more smarter than Superman. But so he would have the brain of Bruce Wayne and Batman, and have the strength of Superman. And the only difference is he's black. <laughs> Basically, you're saying black Superman, <laughs> black man. Uh, Don, you're running Fez. Hey, uh, Fez's idea. They already did that. It was called Quantum Leap. See ya. That's more he probably you probably were watching Quantum Leap. Mine wasn't time travel. Mine was all takes place in the modern day. And this guy just changes into different people. Mm. So it's modern leap. It's one day leap, <laughs> same day leap. All right, I had an idea for this. Uh, it's one of the, it's a superhero with powers, but this would be called Man Man, and it would be a man who has all the powers of a man. He would have the ability to run like a man, the strength of a man, and the intelligence of a man. <laughs> man Man. But wow. that's just a man. Man? Yeah, but those aren't really powers. Did you just see a guy running down the street <laughs> <laughs> at, at regular speeds. <laughs> and then he'd, he'd be able to lift about 225 over his head if he needs to. He could probably lift another human being over his head. And he would win some fights. <laughs> yeah, not all, because everyone would have the same powers he has. Yeah. The same Except for the women wouldn't. The same powers as man man. Man man! I don't know if that would take off. I don't know if that comic book would sell. And a lot of times he would be out of shape. He would have to take care of his man man powers, so he'd have to go to the gym every morning. Does he have like a... And it really wouldn't be a bad idea for him to meditate. Does he have like a lair or something? Some headquarters? Oh, well, he has an apartment. Oh, okay. Fezzi, uh, who's the best actor all time? I would say Marlon Brando. Jeffrey Tambor is the greatest actor of all time. Uh, honestly, the best uh, character ever is the one he did on the Larry Sanders show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hank Kingsley is so funny. It's amazing. And then uh, the, the other uh, thing that we just had a couple years ago, Russet Development. Fantastic show. Uh, and how did he start off? Was he on... Um... There, I remember seeing him on Three's Company. Yeah, and then, then he switched over to the Ropers? Right, yeah, exactly. Then he was the next-door neighbor on the Ropers. But remember that movie that he did with Al Pacino, too? Yep. It was so fantastic. Yes, he was. He was, he, he was the lawyer who had a nervous breakdown yeah. in that film. He was the modern-day Fez, they were calling him. Yeah, he, he was unbelievable. He's, so he's incredible. Well, he's got a brand-new series that he's going to be part of called Welcome to the Captain, Fez. It's going to premiere Monday night at 8.30 on CBS. You can go to CBS.com to check it out. Welcome to the Captain. we got Jeffrey Tambor standing by. He's on uh, line with us here. 
Jeffrey Tambor, welcome to the Ron and Fez show. Hi, I heard what you said. Thank you. That was really nice. I don't know. In your neighborhood, do you have like a lot of people that know each other? Yeah. My building is fucking crazy that way. Yeah. And my chick, God bless her heart, fucking pulls me into things <laughs> that I normally would not be involved in. So, but have I told you about the old guy that uh, every time I see him, he tries to bring up China Beach? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So he sees me uh, reading books, right? Uh, you know, sometimes I'll go out front, smoke a cigar, and I'll be reading. So, uh, what's that book about? I'll tell him, and I'll always be like, ah, I couldn't, you know, whatever the book is about, it, he decides it's too over his head, right? You know, and God forbid it's anything that's not Christian. Uh -huh. You know, if I say it's Buddhism or Hinduism, uh -huh. what? <laughs> yeah, we had one of those in the neighborhood, and then he also calls everything the wrong name, like. Because he remember he he lived in this block for like seventy five years, so he's always calling different places like the candy store because that's what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a laundromat now. Yeah, absolutely. That's no, no matter what it is, right? Uh, it's upstairs from the candy store. Like what fucking candy store? And I have to walk down to see what he means. So then, <laughs> some his friend gives him a book, right? Ah, my friend gave me a book. I guess I'm going to be like you now, reading a book all the time. <laughs> and uh, he, he fucking, and it was about the Sunset Strip. So he goes, you want to borrow this book? So I take it from him next day. How's, uh, how's that book coming along? <laughs> <laughs> I finally I read the book. I get back to him. Thank you. Next day, he shows up with another book. Now we got this fucking connection. This one's about singers of the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking half paragraph on every fucking crooner who ever lived. I'm forced now to read fucking books that he gave me. <laughs> my, my building is so much of craziness that wherever you go, everybody knows what you're up to, wow. what you're doing. It's like a sitcom building. It is. And I'm like, it might be time for me to leave. It's too sitcom -y. And then everybody's got this fucking, we got this cool little uh, coffee shop in the neighborhood where everybody meets. And it's very much like fucking Cheers. Yeah. Everybody knows who's working, who's not. They're I feel totally fucking confused about what I do. You know? <laughs> I don't think that would feel good, you know, in a it big does. city. It doesn't. Well, here's the thing. People don't realize that when you live in a city... It's much more, they think, you, you. all they see is the big city. But really, you know your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Right. I know everybody in my neighborhood. Yeah. To, to the fucking too far. Right. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm in Brooklyn. It's a, it's a much different neighborhood than probably yours. And I know all the people. I know the spots. The uh, general store that, you know, that just yeah. opened up. I know them by first name. Yeah, that's what happens no matter where you go in the city. You just become part of that block. Well, Earl, you don't know anybody in your building, right? Yeah, I know a couple of people in my building. I know, like you've this, been there how many years? Uh, ten years. Have you ever been to a party in that building? Uh, no, I have not. I I guarantee you never have been. <laughs> I know that you haven't. <laughs> you know why? Because this is your building, you crazy <laughs> bastard. We know you're sleeping here too. I don't sleep in here. You know the people in this building. I know he these. knows Inga. <laughs> Who comes in every night at six thirty to do the trash? Uh, yeah, and sometimes she'll even wash his black toothbrush. <laughs> Why does even your toothbrush have to be black? No, I, mean, I gotta keep. I gotta match with everything. You should do a thing, Earl, where you can only eat black foods. You have to have licorice with every meal. <laughs> Boy, there aren't a lot of black food. chocolate pudding. That's well, really that's brown. brown. That's yeah, to think of. I thought Oreos were were black, and then everyone complained at me and said they're brown. They're brown. Uh, how so? How are they brown? I mean, I thought they. Uh, I, I to me they were black too, but I think if you get close enough, they're brown. Yeah, you no. gotta really look. They're dark brown. The whole color scheme is black and white. They, it's not brown and white. No one's ever thought brown and white is a good color scheme that goes together. Or those are, are those are black and white. Brown and white. No, or those are black and white. I always thought they were black and white. Always like the color, like the white socks, black and white. Same same exact schematics. I thought the bears were black and white. I didn't know. <laughs> then I found out they're blue. My fucking, yeah. my shading is off. So you're saying they're brown and white? Because I no, said... No, I'm saying they're black and I white. I always said they were black and white. Fezzi and the listeners sh fucking attacked me on it one day. Well, the, uh, I, I didn't hear it. They're wrong. They're wrong. It's black and white. I don't think Oreo would want to have a brown cookie anyway. Earl, what color are Oreos? 
I always thought they were black. All right, see this now? <laughs> I've been fucking living in a crazy world because of you, Fez. They are brown. Holy look shit. Look at them. They're brown. I did look at them. I see black. But I know I have this little fucking color thing. Brown is a Nestle Crunch bar. An Oreo is so much darker than a Nestle Crunch bar. But That's is an Oreo, is that chocolate? You know, I think it's supposed to be a chocolate cookie, yeah. Well, maybe it's dark chocolate. Maybe it is black. It's brown. Trust me. No, no. A brown is, is certainly... A, brown is milk chocolate. Dark right, chocolate. This has changed my life because maybe I'm not colorblind. Maybe you fucking colorblinded me up in my own head. I did not I see, see black and white when I see an Oreo. I need somebody to help here. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Are they black and white or are they brown and white? They are brown and white. Trust me. I can't trust I you. Enough of them. I got everybody else in here saying something different. I did trust you. If I find out that the fucking bears are black and white, I'm going to go crazy on you. They're not. They're blue. Uh, Kevin, you're on a fez. The bears are blue and white, but the Oreos are definitely black and white, Ronnie B. Definitely black and white. Are you sure? I'm going to keep Positive. track. Positive. All right. Positive. Brandon, you're on run a fez. Go ahead, Brandon. Dude, I, Fez, I am in your fucking kitchen, and the Oreos are black and white. You are not in my kitchen. You're nowhere near my cookies. They're brown and white. Here's Bruce. Bruce, you're around a Fez. Hey, Ron, you're absolutely right. They've always been black and white. I don't remember y'all having this argument, but... Uh, well, we did it at NEW years ago. Oh, I don't ever remember you from NEW. I remember you from... Florida and then XM. Hey, I wouldn't. I would never have talked in Florida. I never would have lowered myself to a conversation about Oreos. <laughs> we were an amazing show then, but we were all sane. Uh, here is uh, Jason. Jason, you're on a fez. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually looking at a bag of Oreos that I'm eating with my lunch right now, and they are black without a reason. What are you okay. for? You fucking take Oreos to work? <laughs> Yeah, sure uh, I, I Fez, everyone's saying black and white. They are brown. All you, uh, they're a dark brown, yes, but you have to look at them. They're brown. Dark brown is black. Earl, I mean, did you already no, send somebody not. out to get these? Did they get milk with it? Uh, they went out to get, I don't know about the milk part. Why wouldn't they have milk? What am I going to do? Eat an Oreo without the uh, milk? Uh, Franco, you're in front of Fez. Yeah, have you ever looked at the cup when you're done dunking the Oreos in the milk? It's black. Fez, you got to answer some of these questions. People are saying the same things as me now. Yeah, they are absolutely but, brown. But how can you come up with something other than just saying brown over and over? How can you prove this to us if you're the only one saying brown? I mean, all I can do is have you look at them and show you that they are a brown, that it's who, a dark who, brown Who is cookie. the person you respect most in the world? What listener do you respect most in the world? I would say Mikey Boy. HTG. Oh. She is saying right now, black and white. Six zero. Now, have I, have you fucking gaslight me? Did you do a gaslight on me? And for years you convinced me that I was wrong? I have now just given up believing that my eyes can distinguish color. That's what he does. That's what he does to you. He, I have not gaslit you. He's in you. my fucking kitchen. He sends you tickets that you don't want, crazy ashtrays. God damn it, I forgot about that. Ashtrays. That fucking Neil Young night yeah. was a nightmare. Ashtrays as well. Yeah, I think we all that? know the history, Dave. What's what, what? What was with that goddamn ashtray? What kind of gift was that? that was a Tell nice him, gift. Trying to get your, you know what he does, Mister B. In my opinion, he he goes back to his friends on Roosevelt Island and says, "Now Ron thinks black is brown. He's an idiot. That's what he does." All right, gaslight. Six zero. By the way, I cannot. Black. By the way, uh, I can't count on my own. I I have lost enough color things that I can't count on my own. I need people to help me with this. I guess I'm handicapped when it comes to color. Right. I, I, I have a similar gene with uh, tans. For whatever reason, I can't distinguish tans. But I can distinguish blacks and browns. What I can't distinguish, I have a problem with the dark blues, blacks, dark browns. Hmm. They all look black to me. And my... Uh, my chick doesn't, you know how like a guy will see just primary colors, you know what I mean? Right. But she uses like, you know, fucking color names I don't even know. Yeah. She can like see everything there. And I'm only able to see, you know, the most boldest colors possible. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, like I, when I, someone says uh, the, the, that the bears are blue and white, I'm like, 
Well, I thought the fucking Giants were blue and white. How are they both blue? Yeah, I always thought the Bears were black. Definitely thought Wait, that. Wait, you're on the black with the Bears now? Yeah, because because I look at the Giants as blue. Yeah. A darker blue than the Giants, I so. I don't it's know. It's a dark navy blue. You no, have to go by there, shades. Okay, wait a second. There is no such thing as a dark navy blue. Navy blue is the darkest kind of blue. If it goes past that, it becomes black. See, my problem is I cannot. I get in the navy blue and it's black. Like uh, I see a pea coat as being black, mm -hmm. but people tell me that's dark blue. That is supposed to be navy blue, right? I can't see it. I see a black fucking coat. You know, and yeah. I'm just giving up. What color is your fucking thing? This, I would say, is navy blue. I only see the lightest tint of blue in that. If I was to say, just off the top of my head, if I didn't know it was tied in with the Giants, it might not even. But to me, that looks black. Oh, wow. Is it that far off? No, it looks very blue to me. All right, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm it looks obviously off. blue to me. That's what my point would be. Am I that far off? Yes. Yeah. That's your answer. Um, here's uh, Don. Don, you're on yeah. I remember a while back, a year or so, that this was debated, and a woman from Nabisco came on and said that no matter what it looks like, it actually is a form of chocolate, like a brownish more than a black. Yeah, I think we did that at NEW. Yeah, that's what it was from, back at NEW. But who, what fucking gives her the right? What makes her be able to say, color is color is color? I'd rather talk to some. I'd rather talk to uh, somebody that understands color properly. I mean, just because she packages the cookies... And she doesn't. She just answers she the phone. She sees them she every eats the day. Cookies. Yeah, but that's like you fucking call here. Does Caprice know what we do? He would answer the phone if you called this fucking building. Right. Oh, hey, man. He said to me today, how come you don't get all those nasty girls on your show? <laughs> oh, Caprice, please. Don't worry how we're running things. I do what I do. It's none of your fucking business, Caprice. <laughs> Uh, Emily, you're on running fuzz. Hi, you know, I was just calling because uh, my mom is a preschool teacher, and so, okay. like, you know, her kids eat little Oreo cookies all the time, and their little teeth, because they never lick them, you know, are totally black, not brown. Oh, boy. All right, that's you a know good how point. That is? And then also, I'm from Chicago. The bears are definitely dark blue and orange. Yeah, I just can't know, see it. All over the place. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I got something wrong with my eyes. I don't even know why I live with the eyes that I have. Unfortunately, unfortunately for them, they're striking. That's the only good thing about it. <laughs> well, men uh, men are more susceptible to color blindness in general. I think that that's true. I think men have very little to do with color. Yeah, I don't even think like if somebody leaves here and you'll go, "Hey, what color coat was he wearing?" Nobody will fucking know. You right. know what I mean, well, women always are bringing up color. Right. I, I always think like a lot of things are tan, and then people tell me they're brown or. I get grays and greens confused. Uh, or, like, do you even, uh, are you even knocked out that one color looks better when people are always like, hey, what do you think of the new room? Does, you know what I mean? Does that put, I don't know. No. You, the fucking place could be prison walls for all I care. <laughs> I always notice that stuff. You're a girl. <laughs> How color will change your room? Mm -hmm, you got a vagina. <laughs> do not. He, he likes his walls pink. What color are your walls, Fez? Mike walls are white. Apartment white. <laughs> Mr. I notice color. <laughs> Never has once, any place he's ever lived, has ever fucking put color on his walls. Ever. He leaves his own mental hospital to go to another <laughs> right. one. Who, why just white walls? It's industrial. Every fucking place. And yet he's got the balls to go, I notice color all the time. <laughs> and I send people flowers. It's all lies. <laughs> I have sent flowers in the past. Mm. Earl, you're right about him. He's a blabbermouth. And you got in his kitchen today. He did not get in my kitchen. Uh, uh, Brian, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. How you doing? Listen, I'm a flavor manufacturer. Yeah, I've worked with Invesco. Um, the caramel color that they use is so concentrated, it actually comes out as a black cookie. Thank you. He just said they use a caramel color. What's the difference? Caramel We're saying, brown. But what color is the cookie? The cookie is a dark brown. All By the way, it's caramel. It's not caramel. Why would something be a caramel? I thought we had this discussion before. <laughs> Eight to nothing, black over brown. 
eight. All right, look, you brought in uh, two cookies. You sure all right, went all me... out on the cookies. <laughs> let's try to open this up. All right, I got to tell you the truth as I look at this. Fezzi, and I, will, I cannot be trusted. I will not put myself up as a judge. Because to me, this just looks black. That is a... Now, now, if I get closer, I guess I can see some brown in there. But yeah. what are we trying to do? It's a brown cookie. It looks like a like a brown bear. It's the same color as a as a grizzly bear. That is I just... thought a grizzly bear was black. Uh, I'm, not brown. Gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Errol, what color is a, a grizzly bear? I always thought they were black. <laughs> me too. They are black. That is the same. Wait, so let's just all say this. Fezzi, you yell out, it's as, it's as brown as a grizzly bear, and then the three of us are saying it's black. All right, well, maybe I got the wrong bear. <laughs> it's uh, like a brown bear. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you got the wrong cookie. <laughs> no, this is brown. I can see brown right looking at it. The crumbs on my paper now are brown. Can we agree it's delicious? Oh, yes. Can I ask this question? Connect four. There are two colors of pieces. Right. Okay, what what would the, those colors be in the board game Connect Four? They're um, those are black and red, right? That is the same color as a Connect Four piece. No, it is not. That's the same color as a Connect Four piece. It absolutely is not. It is. This is a brown cookie. And oh, can I, I will say oh. this. I don't see the difference between this and a Connect Four. I could easily play a Connect Four with with these cookies and feel totally at home <laughs> with it. Let's ask somebody who knows. Let's ask a uh, beautiful woman. Here's uh, Melinda who just came in. Hi, Hi sweetie. How are you? Hello. Now, we were just talking about this. Mm, I was uh, listening. Men, I think, have trouble with color. Yes or no? Um, It's been known, yeah. Are you attracted to color? Do you do you look for color-coordinated things? Uh, Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah, right. See, I don't think men do that, though. I don't think men even understand matching. No, not at all. Because I tell Anthony all the time what doesn't match, and he doesn't. He's like, I don't know, it looks does, good to me. Does he care about the color of the home and what's going on inside? Could not care less. Yeah, I think that's the normal man thing, and yet women are attracted to it. All right, so I'm going to ask you about this. What color is this Oreo cookie? You know, I always thought of Oreo cookies as being black and white. Thank you very much. Boom, boom, done. Face. <laughs> that's it. Face. Now call her the names you were calling me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not call. No, call her. Okay. The same names that you called me. Call I didn't her. call you any names. She did. When it gets stuck Look in your teeth, they... I know. I gotta say, though, they look brown. It's the Ron and Fez show on a Thursday. The new Watley Posse song from Perry Noid. And we have the new Watley Posse t-shirts. Thanks to Photoshop Mike and RonandFezStore.com. We'll have some of those to give away. They're brand new for the Watley Posse. Basically to reward the good job from yesterday. Um, well, good job to you, Fezzi. Uh, bad job uh, for the Z-Man. All right, Ron and Fez show, uh, hanging out with you. Melinda brought us all uh, lovely, lovely uh, gifts, which we uh, appreciate. No work for you today? No, I, I took the day off. I just got a message from Anthony a and uh, yeah, from Anthony asking if uh, he should work at Ziggy's at my radio store because I'm here doing radio. <laughs> it really would be uh, a good idea. <laughs> Uh, Ziggy's well, a big fan. So. I not know uh, that you uh, you took that other job recently. Some money problems at home. Yeah, yeah. Things yeah, not no, working out uh, the way. Oh. You need that extra cash. Big coke problem. <laughs> Which one of you? Both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know that don't make you a bad person. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't even understand how you can make it through life without having a big coke problem. <laughs> when the uh, guy came in here the other day and was talking about the credit card problem, at some point in your life. You should overmax your credit cards and have to deal with it. <laughs> At some point in your life, you should develop a drinking problem, a drug problem, horrible problems uh, with women, uh, where you you know you you're running two or three at the same time. You need to have all these things happen to have a full life. You don't want to spend your whole life sitting on a shower bench, wondering <laughs> what went wrong. Well, I don't do it every day. By the way, you say things go wrong, fuzzy. I uh, what is wrong in your life? Oh, I just feel like I make a lot of mistakes. Like what? I feel like I screw up on the show. I feel like I screw up at home. I feel like... Screw yeah. up on the show is your job, so that's not a problem. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I never once get a call with, from XM. That Watley has screwed up <laughs> one too many times. <laughs> I, I've never heard anybody say that. Yeah. 
I know. It's only me saying it, and that's my problem. No. Uh. And that's what, I, you know, that's what's being said in the shower. Well, uh, I do have my recommendation here. I, that's a note that you put up to me that says you are retarded. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's your diagnosis. Uh-oh, look who's coming into the studio, Fez. Oh, the, look who it is. The person that yeah, you... look who it is. ...that you unlaced the Watley posse on yesterday. I guess he's coming in to say he's had enough. Well, I thought he said he had enough before that even happened. <laughs> yeah, I had enough. Yeah. Now, here's what happened. Uh, Z-Man, you were in the other day. You were wearing all your Giants gear. Fez wanted to bet you. You said no. And Fez made a wreck out of your life. Uh, oh. He destroyed your website. Yesterday, I listened to the whole show, Fez. Right. And I'm listening to you. And I'm not going to call in. I'm not going to bow to this. And then, you, you, you you don't want to bet your hair. The yeah. guy has fabulous hair. Take your hat off and take a look at this hair. Yeah, you're not going to put hair like that <laughs> up. That's good hair. That's fantastic hair. Come on, I'm almost fifty years old, man. It's a, no it, gray. What? What? All right. He does <laughs> have gray. gray. Plenty of gray. Honey. Right. <laughs> Little gray. We just talked about colors. Trust me, gray. Right, listen, listen, well, listen. One of the things about him is he doesn't really have a sense of self. Oh. But yeah. you, you did not want to. You didn't want to bet your head. You've never been bald in your life. Well, it was a last second thing, right? I yeah. didn't want to. Right. Didn't want the Uncle Fester look. Right. Frightened me. But then he went on and on and on. So caught me off guard. So I'm listening to the whole show yesterday. I'm not going to call in. I'm not going to give in to this. Then he unleashes the firestorm from hell. Right. The Watley Posse mm -hmm. rains down upon the blog site. So many hits in two hours. My eyes were spinning. And, and you know, it was like... And you have a nice little blog. You're talking about cigars. You're talking about... Uh, guy things, things that annoy you. You're not ready for a radio war. It's ridiculous. Right. So that's how the posse rolls. Well, there the wasn't even a posse yesterday <laughs> morning. Now there's a posse. The posse was amazing. And how's Fez a leader? Was... When did you become such a leader of bad people? It's leader. one of those charismatic things. I they guess, just yeah. follow me. Yeah. I can't help it. Yeah, you're it. charismatic. Get them, my pretties. Get them. <laughs> yeah, that was so, the line of the day. I love line that line. of the day. <laughs> so anyway, the, <laughs> the gist of the whole thing was that everybody and their brother said I'm a pussy. Everybody. My mother but said I'm a pussy. My brother did. You're right. <laughs> and your, your mother said that like three weeks ago yeah. before there was any bad. This is the way you've lived your life. But she said it this morning. Yeah. I'm the, that was the main message. Z-Man, you're a pussy. If you don't take the bet, you're a pussy. You're a pussy. You're a pussy. You're a pussy. All right, let me, let me ask Dave. Dave, you're a Giants fan. Yeah. Would you have taken the bet? I would have taken the bet in a heartbeat. Because Giants, you got to back your Giants. Because if you're a true believer in your team, you fucking risk life and limb. For well, them. here was my point with the two Z man, and, and obviously everybody can get in. But if my team that I loved since I was a little kid, like you, uh, lost the Super Bowl, I don't want hair. I don't <laughs> want hair at that I point. I wouldn't that. blame you a bit. You know what good is hair going to do me? Yeah. Well, listen, man. Here's the deal. Especially that hair, yeah. See, man. Hey, right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Friends. Come up with a dish towel. I drove <laughs> in an hour uninvited, busted That's in. That's true. Got <laughs> past Master Poe, got in here. And the reason <laughs> is that Giant fans, as Dave will tell you, have tons of honor and tons of dignity. Giants have been around since Most the of 20s. Them. Most of them. Well, they do now. Because, <laughs> Fez Watley, I accept your bet. Yeah! I accept this bet. The yeah, New York Giants will beat the New England Patriots this fucking yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Right. And the Giants right. will kick ass. And Wait I go minute. hair on hair this with is, you. The, no one can call me a pussy. Right, this is I am doing thing. it. I I you can. and Pitsy are wearing matching shirts <laughs> without even True knowing. True fans, Ronnie. True fans. What is, where did everybody get their t-shirts this week? It's the locker room shirts. And what does this cost you? 30 bucks. 30 oh bucks. Oh my gosh, for that? Now, here's the thing. This is how rigged football is. If the if they don't wear these shirts after these conferences, they get fucking fined. Like oh, when Brady has uh -huh. the hat on, right? Yeah. Or yeah. Winners, winners have the hat on because you assholes run right out <laughs> and spend thirty dollars on something. You got the hat too. Yeah. What the hat, hat cost you? 
Uh, like about 30. Fucking sheep. And if you go in today, I think it's all 25% off, so. Giant fans. Well, go I'm going to get it that. next week. When, yeah. after, <laughs> when it says Super Bowl when, champions on it. No, this one. This same shirt yeah. when you see homeless yeah. guys wearing it. <laughs> I got my self a beautiful new shirt. <laughs> you saw the sticker on the fucking shirt? Yeah, yes. Oh, God. Why? Why do you still have the sticker on it? Because. Uh, you're going to go hair versus hair. You've never been involved in your life. I've never done it. Keep the hat. My, listen, my well, wife is scared shitless. Why? Because you know, I'm going to look like Uncle Fester. How long have you been married, happens. though? 20 years this April. But what, so why care what you look like at that point? It doesn't matter now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for the Giants and Giant fans. That's why I'm doing this. That's all there is to it. All right, so can call you call the pussy. posse off so we can get his blog back up? I'll tell you what. I don't know if I can call the you posse have to, off. You have to call the posse off. Mind of their own, yes. Posse, cease, and desist. You said a minute ago you're charismatic, and now they have a mind of their <laughs> own. Do the right thing. Everybody go into waiting before Fez's next attack. Exactly. Watley Posse, go back to standing on alert. Stand down, Watley Posse. Down at DEFCON 2. Is Maybe the next uh, thing could be against Earl, because remember when he oh, I got in your not kitchen? Oh, I yeah. Got in your kitchen. You got to let get me. my kitchen. Yeah. I got to say something, Fez, about the Watley Posse, the fans. You know, you got to imagine some of the shit I read was the most obscene <laughs> crap I have. I wouldn't say stuff like that in a whorehouse. It was so bad. But the point is, after reading through all that stuff, the, the F Ron and Fez fans are absolutely the best, most passionate fans in the world. There is no fan like this. They're going to leave, ever, they're gonna leave you alone. I've never seen yeah. it. They're going to leave you But alone. I've never seen anything like it. Well, but I've been know, a fan for 10 years. You're right. You know. I've never seen anything like it. I Back mean, off, Posse. They're, they're like you're like their family, and they like just defend you. And I was so why the why would they get so angry because a guy doesn't want to do a hair versus hair bet? They're that loyal to me. All right, how many points are you giving them? I'm not giving them any points. This is a pride bet, and that's the thing. Why man. pride? I'm you're taking a team Boston. that's twelve point underdog. Straight up on a hair bit. Yes. G give me a little. Give me a little respect for that. No, I'm not giving you any points. Give him that is, a, if you want, if you love him so much, give him respect. I, let me ask give him uh, respect. Uh, we got all the give giants. Him respect, sir. The giant guy. Yes. Uh, are you gonna win the game outright? We're gonna win the game, baby. 24-21. New York Football Giants. Get last minute, last second field goal. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> last field goal. Eli will lead the team down the sidelines. With a field goal, two minutes left. To the sixth. He will get to the six-yard line. Six yard line. <laughs> Z better have a chip shot for that point. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Pitsy, what's the final going to be? 34-31 Giants. High-scoring affair. Wow. It's going to go back and forth. I'd love to see a 34-31 I think the over is 53. And he'll, that's basically he's going uh, over. I have 31-27. <laughs> All right. So everybody's so, betting over? Yeah. Well, no, you're going a little late. I'm going under, yeah. Mr. B. It's going to be a defensive struggle. What's the... Uh, the score going to be? 34-17, New England Patriots. So I'm going under. Mm. Yeah, that's right. You're going under. And I'm going yeah! go, yeah! to go out on a limb here. And this is a weird thing. I'm going to predict that there's some kind of assassination over the weekend. Oh. Mm -hmm. Write that down. I just feel it. Something in the, in the thing. There will be an assassination this weekend. Want to clue us in? I can't, I can't pick up on all of it. I just read what comes in. It's like a Gene Dixon thing. Um, oh, here's G Baby. G Baby, you're on Fez. Hey, what's up, buddies? Yeah. Uh, I want to know, Z Man, can you do some uh, Ryan Fez impressions? I love those. Oh, yeah, he does impressions <laughs> of us. <laughs> then you are one of eight million <laughs> that love those impressions. Yeah. They're that big now? Yeah, they're that big. I got up to one fan. That's fucking great, isn't it? You know, uh, Melinda's uh, boyfriend also does impressions. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that would be fun hey, to have on. you guys do impressions. That's our problem. Try out for it. I'll, I'll be the, uh, the That's one. That's our problem after, like, knowing Anthony. It's very hard to be impressed <laughs> with other people's impressions. <laughs> but you do a good Fez. Go ahead, do Fez. Oh, God. Call it on the posse. Do Fez. Call it on. off the posse. <laughs> that is good. That's good. Everybody, stop now. <laughs> That's it. That's me. That's me. Ooh. Who's who? I can't even tell. <laughs> oh, I'm Fed. Oh, Ooh. I'm Fed. I'm Fed. I'm Fed. This is a good act you two have. It is not an <laughs> act. It's a bad impression. Who said that? I said it. Your friend Fez. Uh, Z? No, Fez. I can't tell. Fez! Said it. Oh, that's very pathetic. good stuff. Thanks, Ron. All right, so there's the bet. The bet is out there: hair versus hair, and it's pubic hair also. <laughs> that could take yeah. a while, but all right. Oh, oh God. God. Horrible image. Horrible yeah. Oh man, Fez has a disgusting TMI. amount of hair. Uh, will Earl be doing the shaving? Who's doing the shaving? Yeah, Earl does our shaving here. 
because uh, look at his bald head. The problem with Earl is he takes forever to shave a head. And he'll cut you up like crazy. Yeah, he will. Okay. Yeah, it's not even it takes a long time because he's handling you with such care. No. It's that he's lazy. <laughs> I saw him take a nap in the middle of his shave before. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Earl's head shining. I know. Earl, your head is shining today. Did you put something extra on it? Um, not, nothing more than usual, no. Cheers. Way to add Did you come on now. your own head? <laughs> oh, I did not come on my head. All right. Coming. He, he, he came in his socks, though. Did you, Earl? Why did not come in my Earl, socks? Earl, what's the... What's the <laughs> he, Earl, what's the... Why are you angry? What's the final score of the game going to be? Son of a bitch. I said uh, 30-24 Giants. Right. Yeah! Uh, and we're going to be live on the air that day, but only for commercials. Yes. We, huh. we of course, can't handle the game, but it will be a uh, commercial festival. <laughs> L- little Lily, thanks for fixing your hair, by the way. Uh, she came in here today and look awful. But Bad she's got, Ronnie. Bad Ronnie. What? She looks gorgeous. No, now she did, because I sent her back in. Um. I sent her back in in front of the mirror to work on it a little bit. <laughs> Uh, by the way, talk to Aunt. We got Bob working on a gig for her. So if Aunt ever talks to Bob, she'll go anywhere to work. She's going to be a major star in this business. Um, uh, there's a, a bed test that she has to pass first, though. If Anthony's going to do any kind of pulling for her, she's got to come over. You want to come over there, spend a little time with Aunt Melinda? I've been dying to see their uh, fabulous estate. Yeah, you'll see the ceiling. <laughs> That's it. No, she'll see a pillow. Oh, oh. Yeah, man. Pillow biting? I want to see that hey, butt up yeah. in the air, Lily. I'm oh. sorry. Oh. I have such a crush wow, on her. Oh, my God. I'm, cool. so, I'm blushing right now. but uh, I can't see because Dave's in the way. Dave, lay down. <laughs> that is my favorite position, FYI. Come on in here, Lily. I want you in here, Dave. Get out. <laughs> Disgust me. Lily, uh, and by the way, couples always try to get Lily all the time. It's true. I've been approached for threesomes like so many times. Cause you see, your personality seems like I'm a goer. Yeah, like you're yeah. ready to rock. I haven't though. I've never been in a threesome. Do you want to? I'm actually interested in trying it. Sure. Now, is it weirder for you to be with a couple or to be with two two guys? Oh, with two guys. I'm totally not into that at all. No, it's got to be with a, yeah, with a couple. Kind of grosses me out though. Yeah. Getting gang banged. Well, the problem, too, with that is it gets very competitive when it's two guys. And they're just like, Grr! and you're like, all right, everybody fucking calm down. Take it easy. Well, in the porns when they're giving each other high fives from the front. Yeah, that's always bad. And even in a train, a high five situation makes you feel like a rape has taken place. Even when she's yelling, hurry, it still feels like a rape has taken place. Uh, so you are interested in your life and being with a couple. Yeah, I think. Or just being in a threesome period. Yeah. You know, because Jonathan's pretty into it. Like. Hey, what about that girl? She's cute, right? Yeah. You know, he's a guy. I was going to say Casey, but that's... Mm, with her being yeah. pregnant now. It's too far gone. Uh, even without the pregnancy. <laughs> really? Yes. Casey's you, my baby. You could wait at home like a cuckle. <laughs> Just sitting there. <laughs> Checking you your watch. You could be the driver. I don't like want Like in the to. movie Made. No. I want to get my cock wet. Did you? <laughs> oh, what an idiot. Do you guys ever talk about threesome? I guess now it feels like you're in one. You're there oh, being pregnant. Yeah. Um, sometimes I hint a little bit. Yeah. You know, Ooh, let's watch some porn. I guess in your case, you're over your head being even with one girl. <laughs> Fez, you and Coco ever kick around the, fr- the threesome ideas? No. No, we haven't talked about a threesome yet. Well, trust me when I tell you, she's not against it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> Let's just say one of you is experienced. Oh, okay. In that. We haven't even talked about a twosome yet. <laughs> I was wondering that. Man. Well, it's a long distance affair. Mm-hmm. How many times a week do you talk? Uh, probably, like, I would say two or three. Mm-hmm. What do you talk about? Your penis? No, I don't bring that up. Mm. No. We just talk about what goes on in our days and that sort of thing. Tell her when you cried. How many meltdowns you had? <laughs> Usually, yes. <laughs> I bear my soul, yes. When's she coming out? I don't know. There haven't been any arrangements made mm. for her to come to NYC. Ooh. Can you imagine our Fezzi in a love affair? 
I would I would love it. Wouldn't that be great? I'd cry like at a wedding. Yeah, me too. <laughs> really? Yeah, when yeah. you went out on your date, it would be like a prom. Mm -hmm. You're like your kid going on a prom. <laughs> you really should pictures. put on a tux and go out like that. We had to stop by Aunt Melinda's and have pictures <laughs> taken like, first. Like the one oh, Tom no. Hanks <laughs> wearing big. Look what they're doing to Lily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we stopped by on the wrong night. <laughs> Is this a bad time? Yeah. Yeah, they were on Pal Talk. Anthony was on Pal Talk talking to you last night. Yeah. Well, and uh, I walked in from work and I was just like, hmm, nice. What were you guys talking about? <laughs> um, are you a pussy? No. I, I, no. <laughs> no. I don't even remember. Hey, by but... the way, show uh, Melinda what two fingers you use because oh, these... I find this highly unusual. She goes to the outside like a little Girl Scout. These she uses her Girl Scout fingers. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Even Jonathan didn't know that. He thought I peace signed it. But I yeah, didn't. well, I, I would say peace sign is what most people do. Yeah, you go out, you go, to, you take it to the outside. Yeah, I you, you gang side. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember if I could get those fingers to stay together. You know, what? I can't yeah. either. <laughs> I can do the Vulcan thing before that. That's very hard. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. What two fingers do you use, Fess? I don't <laughs> use two. <laughs> Any. <laughs> Touch your little man on the boat. <laughs> 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 hey, Radio Sharks, got a question for you, Fess. Hey, Fez. Yes, Radio Shark. Do you ever talk to Coco on the phone while you're sitting on the bench in the shower? <laughs> no, I don't, Stink Bomb. That was the end of it. That's, <laughs> a, that's how far he goes with a question. <laughs> that's it. That's his interview. What are you thinking about bringing her out? You got till June, I guess. Yeah, I have till June. So she's the one? Yeah, that's my only one. Yeah. Earl, do you got anybody lined up for this bet? No one. No, zero. Yeah. Nothing yet. Yet. <laughs> Keyword, yeah. <laughs> yet, that is the keyword. I think the keyword is zero. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if your head wasn't quite so shiny. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. You can't turn the lights out. <laughs> Rub some Oreos on it. <laughs> 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 it's like a fucking black mirror. I never knew black to reflect before. We may. This may be a scientific experiment. They'll get us on that Earth program. Black gold. Texas tea. It's like a black diamond. I didn't know it glistened that much. It is today. It's, it does it normally. Oh, yeah, but it's, it's unbelievably shiny. Yeah, I got a. Uh, well, you know what? I used Vaseline on it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that that's could that's be it. it. You oh. maroon. You are what? such a fucking idiot. <laughs> what were you doing? Jerking off your fucking scalp? No, this was cold out. My head gets cold, so I put some <laughs> Vaseline on it. You that Vaseline your warm. head down in the morning. And then what? Today Why? I did. You know, uh, when Ron just said, "Did you do anything different today?" You said, "No." I, I, I wasn't lying. Thinking. I mean, even the term Vaseline sounds like the 1930s. <laughs> what man would Vaseline his fucking head down? If Only it's cold out, you're going to put something on Why? it. But that's yeah. just putting something like liquidy on your head. Yeah. It makes you colder. Why would you put yeah. Vaseline no, I, on it? I, I, I will back him up. I know that Brett Favre Vaseline his face. Before that game, yes, two the, weeks ago, is that from Warren? So did Coughlin, didn't he? Well, I thought it was all right. Well, Coughlin was terrible. The first, is that the first time I saw it? Was uh, I was like uh, twelve when they uh, the Chargers played the uh, the the Bengals. They uh, Forrest Gregg. They always put Vaseline on his face because his face was cracking. But they said it's good for the cold. So you put wind. Vaseline on your head. All winter, not, not and like all winter, just today. Why <laughs> would you ever do this? You ever put a nylon on your head to keep the ringworm from spreading? It's a good idea. <laughs> no, never when I was a nylon. kindergarten, the little black kids all had fucking nylons on their head. My mom's like, hey, uh, I want you to stop playing with those kids with stockings on your head. I want you coming home with ringworm. I'm like, what? I thought it was just, what is that? I thought it was just hip. Because I'm like, hey, have you ever done one of those stockings? I'm going to the school. Uh, here's Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run a Fez. Yeah, Earl, two things. One, I want to let you know they invented something. It's called a hat. And two, if you don't make enough money there, I'll send you one in the mail. <laughs> Jeff, I, I put it on my hat. I he wear a hat every day. Hat. He puts a hat over the Vaseline. Holy moly. Then he puts Vaseline on the hat. I could just see him sitting in that studio apartment, probably the wind whipping around in there, Vaseline in his head down. <laughs> It How am I going to blame this on Fizz? <laughs> <laughs> it puts the lotion on the head. Don't drown in it. Just put a little dab Where's on. your Vaseline now? It's in the bathroom at my apartment. Mm. 
Yeah. Give it to Lily for when she goes over to see Aunt Melinda. <laughs> it's next to his socks. I'm scared. Lily, <laughs> Lily don't be scared. <laughs> Just know this on the way there. There's going to be a little ass work, too. Yeah. Don't think you're getting out of the ass work. That. There's going to be plenty of that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here's Mark. Mark, you got to run a fez. Hey, guys. Uh, I race bicycles, and we... You ever beat uh, one? <laughs> Thank you, Melinda. It's quick, but no one ever gets me. Yeah, it's no, always it's nice good. when someone comes in that understands humor. That took a second, but it was good. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, we, uh, we Vaseline our legs up in the wintertime. And then make out with each other. <laughs> Fucking nice. guys that sit down and Vaseline, they Vaseline their each legs other's legs up before they act like they're in the sport is crazy. David, you're on Run of Fez. You know what, guys? I live in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and you put anything like that on your skin, it's the worst thing for you. It gets cold and then sits on your skin cold. The only time it's good is if you're swimming the uh, English Channel. I don't yeah. see how Vaseline w would keep you warm, Merle. Why don't you do this tomorrow? See if it's better. Put kerosene on your head, light it, and come in that way. Oh, so much warmer. I got a nice oil slick burning on my head. Toasty. Would not be a good idea. I don't want to do a Richard Pryor. Yet. <laughs> Richard Pryor didn't do that. I remember when you blamed Fez today and you got in his kitchen. He was not in my kitchen. But he did blame you. He was cooking, oh, pota totally. cooking yeah. potatoes in your kitchen. <laughs> what are you mad at, Earl? I have no idea what that even means. I was just like, Earl, does Obama mean? put Vaseline on his head? <laughs> I don't know. Keep I him from being ashy. Why don't you do me the favor? When Obama comes to New York, show up. With a sign, it just says Vaseline. It is out of it there. The Give me holding up the Vaseline sign. They will, they will throw me down and arrest me immediately. The Clinton brothers are trying to take credit for the uh, Florida win and get those delegates in. Oh, yeah, now it's, you know, release the delegates or whatever, <laughs> you know. Hey, we won. We need those delegates. Now, they belong to us. No, everyone knew there were no Democratic delegates. Why doesn't Florida count? Now they're acting like Obama hates the state of Florida. And Florida's pissed. Oh, they yeah. They want their delegates to count. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They want to send them to D.C. It's the craziest. Th this is the craziest country. I don't know how we get around the calling ourselves a republic. Because it really isn't. It's madcap. And tonight is Obama versus Hillary one-on-one. -on -one. No John Edwards in the way. Linda, I will say this. Uh, the little scarf she's wearing is very stylish. Yes, when you know what? When you get yourself together, you're really cute. Thank you. But don't come running in here the way you did today. It's just not right. <laughs> I was rushing. I was late. And Melinda, I don't expect to see the roots the next time you're in here. I'm I want so that to sorry. look perfect. Like you're I both, said, they burnt my hair. You know what? You're both pretty girls, but you don't want to just let it uh, go to nature. All right? We're not cave people. Want you, really? you know what I like to do in the office is take out what we have there, set up some mirrors for the girls, you know, make it all like stage oh, lighting. Sure. And let them go in there and spend a half an hour, 45 minutes before they come walking in here. Dressing room, yeah. It's a radio show. You want to look perfect. <laughs> like you. I, a guy is, all guys are ugly. <laughs> Women, I swear, if you say which guy in here is attractive, I would never be able to tell in a million years. Well, that's none. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, to me, everybody looks like Z-Man. But if you, but women are, they're perfect in this world. Here's uh, Cracker. Cracker, you're on a fence. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, black people in the South use Vaseline by the shitload. I mean, they just take it on. It keeps their skin from getting ashy and stuff and lotion, too. And Is that, that it, Earl? You use it all the time? I, I use it on my face, yeah. Use it on my face, and I use the lotion on my legs and my elbows. <laughs> Every morning, you're Every doing morning. the Vaseline treatment. No, because get my my skin gets really ashy. There's, there's uh -huh. some truth to that. Yeah. Are you worried about blowing away one day? <laughs> no, but it's just it's just crumbling up and blowing away. Do you ever uh, put uh, Vaseline on before you run through the fire hydrant in the summer? <laughs> no, I never put it on before I ran through the hydrant. Whereas you call it the water park. <laughs> hey, we had to improvise. We everyone didn't have a pool. God, I grew up poor. Running through the fire hydrant? Yes, at day camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. There's no colder water in no. the whole world no. than a hydrant. And it is fun as shit. A, a kid would rather run through a sprinkler than ever <laughs> go in a pool. Oh, yeah. And Earl, you can't swim, can you? Not a lick, no. Can't swim at all. That's a shocker. But you can jump over any hydrant you say in the country. <laughs> I yeah, hey, I, I, I grew up in New York City. Pitsy, you can't uh, swim either. No, I can't swim. And he lives on Long Island. He is never more than 40 feet away from the ocean where he lives. Pitsy also can't ride a bike. 
What Pits. have you ever ri- tried to ride a bike into the water? <laughs> I just you. think I wouldn't make it. Can you color? What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> I can color. <laughs> uh, here's Brian. Brian, you're on Run Fez. Hey, good morning. Hey, Melinda, since I heard you describe Happy Typey Girl one day, how about you and uh, Lily, a little open mouth kiss? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> what did that have to do with Deb? Yeah. What we, oh, yeah, you were saying that you saw uh, Deb topless before. Yes, I have. How'd she look? Oh, uh, just darling. Now, why would she be topless? What was the occasion? Um, we were at um, Arlene's Grocery for karaoke one night, and she mm. got fucking shit faced. Yeah, she gets, she gets oh, hammered. Yeah. She gets tore She gets up. hammered. Yeah. And she was just, she just flashed. She was like, look, and flashed me, and just picked up her shirt and her bra, and I was just mesmerized. They huh? were beautiful. Huh? Really? Yes, very. They're very, very nice. Very firm. Yeah. Nice little dark nipples on her. Dark? Darker than her skin. You know? Uh-huh. Like, nice, nice color. Nice shape. Wow. So exciting. Uh, I think alcohol is the best thing that's ever happened sometimes. <laughs> so great. Because that's so out of context for her. I know, right? I yeah. never would imagine, yeah. No. Look at her blush. That must have been the, the, the night of nights. Oh, yeah. That was a good night. Yeah. That was a really good night. Drinking's the best. It really it's is. Like, I can't wait to get to I'm going to get back into it. <laughs> I am. so great. I mean, I was so damn good at it. You guys would really... I swear to God, it would probably take you guys a couple years before you knew I had a problem. <laughs> But see, I would be drinking now. Well, There's nothing wrong with that. I would be too. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was. Yeah, if I had a beer, I'd be drinking. But that's how, like, you know how I am now? Like, if we have a break, I go to smoke a cigar. Yeah. That's how I am with everything that I pick up. Right. Like, it would be like, oh, we're going to commercial. Time to chop a couple. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Can I uh, address what is written on Deb's camera? Yeah, what is she saying? She That I showed her my boobs first? Yeah. I, I, I don't recall that. No, that never I don't happened. recall ever showing anything. Oh, yeah. she was drunk that and, night. You know, uh, Deb always acts like she's never been with women before, but I think she's oddly curious. Yeah, because she always shows me her panties and stuff. Like Get she's always out, spreading man. her legs. Oh. When she's wearing little skirts and letting me see her panties. She does. She uh-huh. literally spreads her legs. Yeah, you can almost she, see the outline. She was showing off her uh, g-string last time she was in here. For the oh, championship yeah. game. The Patriots thong she had on. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Which I yeah. bet she'll be wearing that for Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And she said this time, she's wearing this tiny little thong. She goes, if the Patriots go to Super Bowl, I'm wearing the same thong, but I'm wearing it backwards. <laughs> nice. <Ew. laughs> that's good luck. <laughs> it's going to be ass really ass uncomfortable. Pussy. Poop pussy. He gets. She's a Patriots No, she girl. washes. And a, a thong, it's just a, it's like a G-string thing. Oh. You know, I've been a Giants fan since like I was 11 or 12 when they were first in the Super Bowl with the Bills yeah. when uh, everyone thought the Bills were going to just destroy. Yeah. And uh, for four years in a row, they kept making it to the Super Bowl and losing. Mm-hmm. That first game against the Giants, I was such a huge Giants fan, and I was so excited that I won 10 bucks in a Giants bet. And you were 11? I, yeah, 11 or 12, something like that. A- Anthony should have been arrested. He literally <laughs> should have been arrested. For letting her gamble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anthony was in Vietnam at the time. (laughs) In 91. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's what... You know, the job was... Rambo was there in 91, so things were still happening. Uh, Lily, you're a Giants fan? You're a Jersey girl? I'm not a Giants fan. I'm I'm all for the Patriots right now. Really? Yeah. I'm a Tom Brady fan as well. Oh, Super he official. is a looker, but... Bootfoot? So Didn't you ask him to marry you at a press conference? <laughs> no, that wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Maybe we should have a girl's bet going. There's a guy's bet. Yeah, Ooh, we want the girl's bet to be. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, like, let's 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 shave our heads. I am there. <laughs> Fez came up with hair versus hair here. Uh, what we, here's what happens, Zay. I'm going to teach you. Wait, wait, you know how I try to teach you the ways of the world? Yes. When the girls start to get in it, something like that? Shut the fuck Yeah, you <laughs> lean back instead of talking them over. At this point, we would have had the bet. So what would no, be a good... What, too late. Would you please stop, you <laughs> fucking... You are so dumb. <laughs> get out. I, I don't know whether there's a, a term for a pussy blocker, but you are one. Let the girls talk. Box blocker. Box blocker, thank you. Um, I don't know. I mean, what could we bet? I don't... I think it has to be something a little embarrassing. You nudity? Mm. I'm thinking nudity. Because I'm thinking Giants are going all the way. I'd say this. If the Patriots lose, okay. and they shouldn't, they're 12 points favorite, you've got to stay, stay the night. With her, or not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm a winner either way. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm nice. trying to. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I'm, what I'm trying to do is invite her into the lifestyle. <laughs> I just uh, 
So would you be up for that? Yeah. All right. That's if the Patriots lose, I yeah. will have to spend the night at Casa de Cumia <laughs> in order to get your inheritance. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're going to be a little roofied up. Okay. That'll be the fun part. Oh, all right. Now, uh, if they win, it's the same thing, but you get three steps. You can get a three-step run heading up this. How you run? And sitting home going, yes! <laughs> the greatest Best show ever. ever! Best bet. All right, Z, see how this all happens? <laughs> now your feelings are hurt. Mm, no. Yeah. Fuzzy. Fuzzy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who was that? Fuzzy. <laughs> Look, we're all buddies again. Look, uh, Z's happy with you. You're happy with Z. You called off the uh, the, the Watley pussies. Posse. Posse. Oh. Oh. Huh? Hey, Watley posse. Yeah. Yes, I have called them off. Posse, stand down. No more attacks on the Z man. He's accepted the hair versus hair bet for this Super Bowl Sunday. Hmm. There okay. we go. And now, uh, now with Lily's bet, I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> not even paying attention. I have more faith in the Giants than Z man does. Is that right? Yeah, he's kidding? worried about he's worried about shaving his head. I'm not it's not worried. I came in here and did this. But it's not going to happen because the Giants are going to win. So you don't even have That's to worry right. about it. Yeah. You That's shouldn't right. have even thought about it for two seconds. You should have just been like, wait, "Motherfucker, wait. I said." <laughs> Let me show you what. He's what? from the, he's from Northwest Jersey. No, no, yeah, no, we're ahead. Oh, sorry, does, listen, sorry to hear that. Tell her what how this escalated. What else do I get if I win? Nothing. It's hair, hair. No, no, because you, you didn't accept you it at here. first. You weren't here. It's hair, hair. What else Come could on. there be? Yeah, you came in and accepted the hair, hair bet. I didn't know that there was more. Now, now you guys are being weird. <laughs> weird? <laughs> now you're being weird. Uh, they see, no, they were fuzzy. If you would accept it yesterday. yesterday. Yes, not today's terms. Right. You didn't come in and say, here's the bet. Yeah, you came in you're and said. You're going for the Giants! 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 Wait a minute, isn't that the Jets thing? Oh, you don't even know I what know. team does that? Well, they ain't copyright shit. Yeah. <laughs> and Lily, this is a very uh, exciting oh. bet for you. I know. I don't know if I'm pulling for the Patriots now or if I'm like, maybe. God, get it. I mean, this way, you'll be running like a little bunny being chased by two wolves. They'll <laughs> 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 be going room to room trying to pick up your set. You're upstairs hiding in one of the closets. Guns. I'm yeah. scared now. Yeah, be careful running around there. <laughs> Because the first thing Anne will try to do is probably shoot you in the thigh to slow you down. <laughs> then, he, then he sends Melinda out to drag her back like a dog. <laughs> Just come, come down the steps with her, pulling her by the leg. Except I won't make it because I won't bring her to Anthony. Oh, <laughs> so exciting. Look Bad at her retriever. Blood. Fuzz Look at her blush. Oh, boy. <laughs> Show me. <Fuzz> oh. <laughs> you sound like the gay Sean Connery. <laughs> was that the impression? It was very sexy, so. Yeah. Fuzz <laughs> Oh, you know, the guys at my radio store asked if you guys could do an extra hour a day. Yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> okay. We'd love to, as long as it the goes computer too fast. doesn't kick us off. Well, uh, for us, it doesn't. That's the <laughs> oddest thing. We're trying to do a, an hour less. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather just get the show down to best ofs and stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like we've done enough over the years that you can play it like I Love Lucy. There should be plenty. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, you guys. We, we love you, too. I love when you come in and sit in with us, too. I love to sit in. It's not. It's great when we don't have ant, like a big shadow standing <laughs> beside us. All right, that's enough. <laughs> that's, we're not bringing anyone home. It's like, Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Ronnie. Ronnie. Fuzzy, it's me, Anthony. <laughs> you got to do an ant impression. No. No. Oh, no. He, he oh, you are quick you on your feet. He eat. quits. Mm, no. He quits. Oh, Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Don't you recognize me? Oh, Long Island. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Melinda. Okay. Melinda. <laughs> Kenny. All right. Uh, that's it for us. We're back here tomorrow for the big uh, pre-Super Bowl show. Uh, we're going to have the uh, Madden set up. Yeah, we're going to have the Madden set up. No, they did it somewhere else this week. We'll see how ours works out. Though. Okay. But it was very close for the official Madden one. We'll see how it works out here. We'll put that game on Pout Talk. Take care, everybody. Homestar, what is it, buddy? Uh, that's the end of my show. Dog.
Ron Bennington, Fez Wadley, The Ron and Fez Show. XM202.